Rivian is holding its AI day out in Palo Alto, unveiling its autonomous driving system and launching its own chip, believe it or not. Joining us now to discuss is Rivian CEO RJ Scaringe, along with our very own Phil LeBeau. Great to have you both here. Phil, kick us off. Thank you very much, Kelly. RJ, we're standing in front of an R2. Slew yep. of announcements you guys just made. We'll go through a number of them, yep. but I want to start first off with your decision to design your own chip when it came for AV and yep. uh, artificial intelligence. Yep. In the past, you've worked with NVIDIA, but this time you said, no, we're going to go it alone. Why go it alone given the expertise that NVIDIA has when it comes to AI? Yeah, I mean, the process of developing a chip is not something you take lightly. It's a, it's a long, multi-year process. It takes a tremendous amount of capital and, importantly, a really capable team. And, and ultimately for us, it was a decision around really the investment in autonomy and how important that is for our business <laughs> and the recognition that vertically controlling the hardware at the compute level, at the chip level, allows us to build a more efficient system and, importantly, we can get to much higher levels of performance at a very affordable cost. What you showed today was impressive, but the market, this is your worst day in more than a year in terms of shares of Rivian. And Morgan Stanley was out with a note not too long ago saying, you know what, I don't think that Rivian can keep up with the hype cycle, if you will, yeah. when it comes to autonomous vehicles. Yeah. Um, and they question if you have the capital needed. Do mm. you have the capital needed to continue making these investments? I mean, for us, there's... Um, is the sort of age-old view of not getting too caught up in the daily movements of the market. Uh, famous quote is, uh, you know, take a look at it over the long term, and it's really a weighing machine. Over the short term, it's a voting machine. And, and for us, we look at this in the long-term horizon. We're building technology to enable very high levels of self-driving. That means the hardware platform, the data architecture, the data flywheel to train this, this uh, foundation model for driving. And... This is something we're very convicted in. I've said many times this is where we're spending a very significant part of our R&D dollars towards self-driving, towards autonomy. It's our biggest spend category. And we're very bullish on what we're building. And so what we're demonstrating today with, with the vehicles is showing just the, one of the first steps. It's a point-to-point -point full self-driving capability. Um, but that's only going to grow over time. But you know the skeptics would say, nice technology, but you need to focus on lower-priced vehicles. What do you say to those people? Well, I, I think it's a bit of a false binary. Of course, we need to focus on lower-priced vehicles. That's this. This is our two. It starts at forty-five thousand uh, dollars, but we also need to make sure the vehicles are really compelling and, and leading when it comes to technology. And so, you know, the reason the R1S has been so successful—it's the most popular premium electric vehicle in the United States. Uh, that's because the tech is amazing, the brand positioning is great, the product features are great. And so as we continue to move into these lower priced vehicles like R2 and R3, the technology needs to continue to lead. You are making this primarily for the people who buy a Rivian so they can use the uh, artificial intelligence, self-driving technology on yep. their own. But you kind of opened the door on stage to the possibility yeah. of pursuing ride share opportunities. Would you consider your own robo taxi service? So, you know, from a technology point of view, if you can deliver level four autonomy, so that's with the vehicle where it can drive empty, meaning no one in the driver's seat completely operating itself, that can go towards a personal level four vehicle. It can go towards a robotax or rideshare uh, level four vehicle. It's, it's very much the same technology. And for us, our initial focus is on personal level four. You know, around 99% of the miles driven in the United States are in personally owned vehicles. It's not to say we don't think the rideshare space is interesting. It's just to say that our initial focus is personal. But we're absolutely open to, and we'll be exploring ways that we can deploy it in the rideshare space. Real quick, Kelly, I know you have a question, but I want to button this up because people will listen to this and they'll say, are you talking with other companies about pursuing a robo-taxi strategy? Today, we're focused on the technology. We're focused on making sure we have a really clear roadmap and a rapid roadmap to level four. Uh, you know, between here and level four, we have what we call eyes off. So that's a level three capability. You can be in the car, in the driver's seat, but on your phone, reading a book, not actively involved in driving the vehicle. But the next major step beyond that is level four. The vehicle can pick your kids up from school, sure. drop you at the airport, or as you said, enable other business models like a robo taxi or ride shares.